In the history of meteorology, few figures loom as large as Ted Fujita, a researcher whose tireless investigations into severe weather phenomena reshaped our understanding of tornado dynamics. Among his many contributions, Fujita's surveys of three particularly devastating tornado events, the 1970 Lubbock, Texas tornado, the 1974 Xenia, Ohio tornado, and the 1976 Jordan, Iowa tornado, stand out for their scientific rigor and historical importance. Each event was initially classified at the extreme end of the Fujita scale, with the Ohio and Texas events rated as F6 and the Iowa tornado as an F5. However, subsequent reviews revised the highest ratings, leading to a consensus that even the most ferocious tornadoes could not exceed an F5 rating. Today, we'll examine these landmark tornadoes, detail Fujita's survey documentation, and explore why the F6 ratings were ultimately downgraded to F5 considering the impact and aftermath of each event. Hello, and welcome to Deadliest Disasters, where we cover some of the most devastating events that happened throughout history. Ted Fujita spent decades meticulously documenting the physics of severe storms. His work not only enhanced public safety by improving prediction models, but also led to the development of the Fujita Scale, a system that categorized tornadoes based on observed damage. Originally, the Fujita Scale ranged from F0 to F6, with F6 representing tornadoes that could theoretically inflict almost unimaginable destruction. Fujita's pioneering work, based on detailed field observations and damage surveys, sought to quantify tornado strength in a systematic way, an approach that transformed meteorological research and emergency planning. On May 11, 1970, a monumental tornado struck Lubbock, Texas, bringing with it a blend of scientific intrigue and human tragedy. Originally designated as an F6, the Lubbock tornado drew significant attention due to the extensive documentation carried out by Ted Fujita and his colleagues, which would later influence how the meteorological community assessed extreme tornado damage. The Lubbock tornado exhibited a strikingly long and relatively narrow trajectory, ripping through suburban neighborhoods and agricultural lands alike. Fujita's measurements indicated that the tornado's path extended over many miles, with certain sectors experiencing concentrated bursts of winds intense enough to rip roofs from large buildings and disintegrate concrete structures. However, just as we'll see with the Xenia tornado, the devastation was not uniformly extreme along the entire path. Some segments registered with slightly less destructive force, a variance that contributed to the debate over whether the event truly merited an F6 rating. The human toll was immense. The tornado claimed 26 lives and left over 1,500 injured. People were not ready for the full destruction that this tornado inflicted. People thought they were safe in their homes or businesses, but the 290 mile per hour winds were too ferocious to withstand. Many people died from flying debris that turned into giant projectiles during the tornado's path on the ground. Cars, pieces of metal and wood from buildings, all being flung at unimaginable speeds. Fujita's analysis highlighted that despite the initial F6 designation, the observed damage in portions of the tornado's path fell within the realm of what one might expect from an F5 tornado. Detailed maps of the debris and damage revealed areas where the storm's energy was indeed supremely concentrated and other zones where it was comparatively moderated. Such disparities played a pivotal role in the subsequent downgrading of the tornado's rating. Arriving at the scene soon after the event, Fujita and his team conducted thorough field investigations, photographing the debris patterns, sampling building fragments, and interviewing survivors. Fujita's descriptive narrative and the systematic categorization of damage provided a robust framework for understanding the storm's intensity. His published papers from the period detail both the micro-scale destruction, such as the complete vaporization of smaller dwellings, and the macro-scale impacts seen in more robust structures that nonetheless sustained severe damage. 
Upon reevaluating the evidence from Lubbock, Fujita acknowledged that the theoretical upper limit of the Fujita scale was based on an idealized level of destruction that the event did not uniformly achieve. The localized variances in building quality and terrain meant that while some areas did meet high intensity criteria, the overall pattern was more typical of an F5 tornado. This critical self-correction not only enhanced the accuracy of the tornado classification system, but also demonstrated Fujita's commitment to scientific rigor and continual improvement in meteorological methodologies. Despite the downgrade, Lubbock, Texas and the people who experienced the tornado were never the same. On a warm spring day in 1974, the small city of Xenia, Ohio became the stage for a natural disaster that would forever alter local communities and the field of meteorology alike. Originally rated an F6, the tornado that struck Xenia was the epitome of extreme atmospheric violence, characterized by a long, twisting, and ultimately devastating path. The Xenia tornado carved a path spanning several miles, its route marked by a complex twisting pattern. Fujita's observations noted that the tornado's path was not linear, it included several curves and a few abrupt changes in direction. The spatial variation in the damage was partly due to differences in building construction and population density, which in turn affected how the intensity was measured. Fujita's survey highlighted that while some sectors of the tornado's path registered extreme damage, others, owing to local variances, fell just short of the most extreme criteria expected for an F6 event. The aftermath of the Xenia tornado was both tragic and transformative. The storm left behind a landscape of shattered homes, devastated infrastructure, and a significant death toll alongside numerous injuries. The tornado's abrupt changes in direction caught the public and meteorologists off guard. Since radar and warning systems were not as robust as they are today, people had precious few seconds to get to safety as the tornado barreled towards them. With over 30 fatalities and over 1,000 injuries, the people of Xenia's lives were fundamentally altered. Everyone knew someone that was directly affected by this record-breaking tornado. Fujita's survey documented these impacts with precision, noting that while the tornado had the potential for even greater destructiveness, many structures withstood the fury due to robust construction or simply by chance. Fujita's later reflections on the Xenia tornado led him to conclude that the original F6 rating, while capturing the sheer power and anomalous nature of the storm, did not accurately represent the typical damage patterns observed. Limitations in the available building standards and the relative variability of the affected areas meant that the theoretical criteria for an F6 were not fully met. Thus, the Xenia tornado became a critical case study in the evolution of tornado intensity assessment, highlighting the need for a more standardized approach that eventually supported the decision to designate F5 as the upper limit. Ted Fujita's in-depth survey of the Xenia tornado provided some of the earliest insights into the structure and behavior of violent tornadoes. Fujita's detailed sketches and photographs of this tornado, later published in several meteorological journals, remain a touchstone for severe weather researchers. In contrast to the previously discussed events, the Jordan, Iowa tornado was initially classified as an F5, a rating that, even under previous definitions, represented the extreme end of the tornado intensity spectrum. Despite not being originally labeled an F6 like its Xenia and Lubbock counterparts, Jordan's tornado provided an important reference point in the understanding the upper limits of tornado violence and the reliability of Fujita's damaged-based survey methods. After Fujita's preliminary analysis of the Jordan tornado, he was quoted saying this was the strongest and most devastating path of destruction he had ever witnessed, surpassing both the Lubbock and Xenia tornadoes. The path of the Jordan tornado was characterized by a more consistent destruction profile, offering fewer extremes in terms of anomalous low or high damage sections. These consistencies helped reaffirm the boundaries of the F5 category. 
Detailed mapping by Fujita's team showed that while the tornado's path was long and winding, the overall distribution of damage did not present any areas that would suggest a force beyond the F5 threshold. This observation became critical evidence in the ongoing reclassification debates. This tornado destroyed virtually every house and business building in the community, but miraculously, all residents survived. Even though Jordan was not a densely populated area, it's a mystery how there were no fatalities and very little injuries from a tornado that caused this much destruction. The original F5 tornado was accompanied by an F3 anti-cyclonic tornado two miles to the southeast. One unusual aspect of the F5 cyclonic tornado and the F3 anti-cyclone tornado was the simultaneous right turn made by each of them. Fujita's documentation of the Jordan tornado was equally detailed and provided a counterbalance to his earlier F6 rated surveys. In Iowa, he focused on drawing out the common elements of extreme weather phenomena while also noting the variations that set the Jordan event apart. His comprehensive report included precise damage measurements, eyewitness accounts, and even meteorological data correlating wind speeds with observed structural failures. In doing so, Fujita established a robust data set against which the characteristic features of an F5 tornado could be confirmed. Each tornado analysis added to his legendary name in the classification of tornadoes. Fujita's subsequent analysis revealed that the theoretical criteria for an F6 tornado were seldom, if ever, met in practice. Detailed comparisons of the debris and damage maps from Xenia and Lubbock with those of the uniformly F5-rated Jordan tornado demonstrated that the most extreme parts of these storms could be attributed to localized conditions rather than a fundamentally higher tornado intensity. While the initial F6 ratings were useful as early indicators of the storm's ferocity, they ultimately proved less reliable than the F5 designation. This re-evaluation was instrumental in refining the Fujita scale, laying the foundation for modern versions such as the enhanced Fujita scale that we use today. Fujita himself noted that while the F6 classification had played an important role in drawing attention to these monumental events, a more conservative and evidence-based approach was necessary to ensure that the Fujita scale remained a scientifically valid tool for risk assessment. Additionally, the transition from the original Fujita scale to the enhanced Fujita scale was driven in large part by the need to address the limitations exposed by events like those in Xenia, Lubbock, and Jordan. The enhanced Fujita scale, which is now used widely across the United States, incorporates more detailed assessments of building construction and infrastructure resilience. This scale represents a matured understanding of tornado behavior a direct descendant of the insights gleamed from Fujita's early field surveys. For communities that remain vulnerable to tornadoes, these improvements translate into better preparedness and ultimately a greater potential for saving lives when storms do strike. Thanks for watching today's video on this devastating but important historical event. If you found this informative, please hit that like button and subscribe for more historical deep dives. And let me know in the comments what other overlooked historical events you'd like to learn about. Until next time, this has been Deadliest Disasters.